I'm really pleased to. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's a function so everybody knows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we said continue? Yes. All right. Okay, hi, hi everyone. I'm really pleased to be here this afternoon with you, and we're gonna well have a little talk around uh, toponymy, and well mainly Argenteuil toponymy because well it's more my specialization. But um, uh, let's see uh, what what do toponymy eats in winter? Probably the same thing as in summer. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so it's mostly we're gonna talk about you know it's the survey. Uh, of the memory of places and names, you know? Everywhere you go, there is a name. Everywhere uh, that you want to go, there is a, a name of that place, you know? And probably during the time, uh, during history, uh, that name had changed. Uh, so for our grandparents or great-grandparents, probably uh, uh, that road would have been uh, called uh, 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 number eight road or uh, route numéro huit. But uh, for us today, it's the 158, eh? or it's the road leading from Saint Jerome to La Chute. So you see, it evolves during times. Uh, I would say that my, uh, well, how come it doesn't work? Okay, yeah. My presentation will last, um, well, we'll see uh close to an hour an hour and a half and we have a we, we're gonna have a period of question at, at the end and uh feel free to uh, hold on your questions or uh to go through the chat and chloe will uh interrupt me any at any time you know to talk about uh what's uh whichever question you have okay so toponymy is about the names of towns streets rivers or bridges so where do they come from at one time in our history, there are certain people who sat down or, and just asked themselves, how are we going to name this place? This is about the way it worked. Uh, uh, sometimes it was uh, just by looking at the place, say, OK, uh, this, uh, uh, this lake looks like uh, the uh, round lake because the lake is round. It's as simple as that. Or at the time, it will be, OK, that place, we should call it above the big chute. And it transformed during time and became Le Chute. So where do they come from? What, what, what are the origins of these uh, names, of these toponymy? Okay, we're going to look at that. Uh, sometimes we think of toponymy as uh, the, the, the roads, the towns, the rivers. But, you know, we named places or buildings or bridges. You know, as for Le Chute, uh, we have many, many, many bridges that has been named. Uh, well, and those names are from uh, mainly pioneers, people who, who established themselves around the North River in La Chute. So, uh, as you see, you have the White Bridge, you have Copeland Bridge, you have Barron Bridge, McGibbon, Paquet, and then Fish. Fish is not because of the fishes. Eh? It's uh, Mr. James Fish, who was a, a millwright and owner of uh, all the, uh, the lands around the big chute. Uh, close to uh, Princess Street in La Chute. And as for white, you know, the white bridge is not because the, the, the bridge was painted in white. It was because of Mr. White, who was the owner of these, that big farm just close to the bridge leading from La Chute to Morin Heights. As for Copeland, today we could call the, the bridge the Green Bridge uh, or the Denani Bridge or uh, what it was at, uh, at first when they decided to uh, give a, a toponym to the bridge, it's the Black Bridge, but the bridge has never been painted in black. It's probably because there was a, a person living close by who was name was Black. It's as simple as that. Okay. In our history, are there any places that have changed their name? For sure. For sure, you know, most of the places has changed their, changed their name because, you know, before us, before the pioneer family who came to uh, through the Laurentian, the lower Laurentian to the upper Laurentian, uh, there were uh, uh, indigenous people living there, native, Première Nation, eh? and for them, they had names for all these places too, you see, probably the Round Lake was the Round Lake too you know because it's cultural and it's there it's it shows that the lake is round uh if it was an otter lake you know because there was a lot of otter in the lake probably they would have named it that way but you know for the natives they knew they knew mostly uh 
they had an anthropological cultural uh, meaning of every places. They knew that from that kind of river, they would go to that type of valley and from that type of valley would end up to that type of lake. So, and they probably had different names and uh, they would identify these names in their vocabulary. So, and that would have been transmitted from generation to generation. So sometimes we inherited of these names for our toponym, as we will see. Um, you see this, well, I get lots of pictures from Le shoot because in Le shoot streets names, uh, it was probably, it was the, the first big city here, right? That developed uh, from 1876 up until, well, with industrialization and the, uh, the, um, the construction of the railway. So with the railway, uh, came streets and came uh, quartier, you know, little uh, little uh, quarters, and uh, so they had to to find names for all these streets. And to find names for all these streets, they probably did not have uh, a lot of geographical information saying, well, this is the long road, the short road, or uh, uh, the the the, uh, the widened road or the hidden road. So they would probably choose names from uh, children, uh, grandpas, grandmas, uh, saying, okay, this will be uh, in honor of that uh, pioneer family. We'll name it uh, Baron Street, or uh, we'll name that one uh, 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 Mikkel Street. So this is the way it worked in a, a town like Le Chute, okay? So what is toponymy? It's, I would say it relies between oral tradition and geographical location. I think it's, I figure it's a, well, easy definition, okay? So toponymy comes from the Greek topos, which means place, and onoma, which means name. So it's the name of the place or places names. Uh, it tells the origins, meaning, and age of the names designate, the, the designating places, okay? And it's the study of the context and motivation of their, their determination. You know, as for myself in my in my line of work as an historian, I, mostly as a public historian, uh, sometimes, you know, towns like La Chute or St. Andrews or even the MRC of Argenteuil, they ask me for uh, a, a kind of a bank of names that we could use for uh, when we uh, uh, we develop another uh, 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 other roads. And so they ask me and every time I will, you know, find these names in, in our history, you know, by saying, okay, I remember that uh, uh, Abigail, that was the name of the first lady who came to settle in La Chute. And she was probably the first one who arrived here pregnant. And she gave pregnancy, right? she gave birth to a little kid. So she was probably the first woman to give birth to uh, a children here in La Chute as a pioneer family. So you see, we explain the context and motivation behind all these determinations. For, so for every toponym that we have here in the province of Quebec, there are meanings behind it. Uh, and it provides information on their impact on societies. Okay, As we'll see, uh, it's the study of places names based on etymological, historical, and geographical information, as we said. And a place name is a word used to indicate, denote, or identify geographic localities such as town, rivers, air, or mountains. Because we know that <laughs> we have names for mountains too, right? Uh, I remembered in the north uh, part of uh, Arrington, there is a place called Michel Tokes, Tokes Mountain. And uh, Michel Tokes, was, he was a uh, First Nation guy who lived there and he was a hunter and a fisherman. And the mountain is named uh, traditionally on his account because he was living on top of that mountain. So they, we never change it. As for Mont Tremblant, uh, the name probably, you know, the Montagne Tremblant probably changed name during uh, during its course of uh, history. Okay, uh, same thing with Saint Sauveur and Moronites. Okay, so evolution of toponymy in Quebec. Oh, it's between a territory and history. Okay, uh, a little history. Sorry. Those, uh, this image comes from the Monopoly, the game Monopoly. You know that, hey? <laughs> there are street, place, avenues, uh, places. Uh, so uh, even even on Monopoly, you know, they use the toponymy to create a, create that game. So it's quite interesting to play with the kids. Uh, so 
the Geographic Commission of the Province of Quebec was created in 1912. Okay, before that, I would say it would have been the Far West, or it would have been, you know, something that uh, people would get a, 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 a I would say, a, a community understanding uh, out. Okay, how are we going to name that this place? Okay, uh, nothing was really official up until it was written. It was written in a notary act or something like that. But even then, uh, as for, you see, uh, in my studies on, on Le Chute in St. Andrews, every time that they were talking about that place above the big chute, some of them would have called it, you know, the place above the big chute, uh, above the big chute. Some say with some, some would write chute, C-H-U-T-E, and others would write chute, S-H-O-O-T, like shooting, but shoot is rapids. Right? Uh, so it was above the big chute and then the chute settlement. And then with the French toponym, it became en haut de la grosse chute. And then the grosse chute was removed and en haut de la chute and la chute was kept. So this is how la chute was created as a toponym. Okay, It was first created by English speaking people and then transformed into this its French, uh, its French uh, uh, form today. Uh, uh, in that time, but that was that was done in a a, a close time, you know, like between uh, seventeen sixty and ninety six and eighteen o three. By eighteen o three, it was written in French in the uh, Notary Act, so it was quite a fast thing. But but you know that little town was developing, so they had the they had at that time the pioneers had to name the place. So, and with the oscillation. Uh, officialization of the commission of the province of Quebec geographic commission came a uh, <coughs> a uh, book which said non geographic de la province de Quebec and it was written at that time in that book all the official toponym okay from 1912 so the Quebec toponymy commission it ensures that Quebec territory is named correctly and highlights the French face of Quebec. And that you probably remember after uh, 1976, uh, from uh, 1977 to uh, with the, 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 the French bylaw, they decided to translate all the toponyms in the province of Quebec to uh, highlight the French face of Quebec. It was during these days, okay? So 1977, the Toponymy Commission is the organization responsible for the management of place names in Quebec, okay? And at that time, it was, uh, I remember living in St. Andrews and St. Andrews was called uh, St. Andrews East or St. André Est. And then it became in its French uh, version. So it became St. André Est and after that St. André d'Argenteuil. But, you know, my family, uh, we bought a house on Kings Row which was uh, Lallée du Roi, hey? uh, it was quite a, a, an honorable name. So we switched from 39 Kings Row to 39 de la Seigneurie. And that was the proposition that the town uh, uh, offered for the translation of Kings Row. Uh, they didn't want to mix it up with the Rand du Roi that was that uh, 138 from uh, going from Montreal to Trois-Rivières and then to Quebec, you see. So Le Rand du Roi disappeared and it became de la Seigneurie. And many, many, many streets name changed name at that time. But some, some of them didn't, you know, like uh, I figure uh, in La Chute, you know, Bethany Road, Bethany Road. Uh, at one time, they decided to put a, a, an accent aigu over Bethany to, became, to, to, uh, to transform it into Bethany. But, you know, Bethany uh, doesn't have any uh, historical meaning behind it. So we kept the Bethany form because the name was the name of uh, Bethany. Uh, same thing with um, uh, Dame Neuve. We have a road called, called Dame Neuve and the Dame Neuve is not the new, the new woman. <laughs> it's not the new woman or the new, the new wife. Uh, it's the dam. Dam has a, a dam, a big dam, you know, uh, uh, constructed on a river. And uh, the only thing that they did, uh, because it was in the cultural heritage of the place, everybody was talking about the new dam. And in French, they were saying it's the Dame Neuve uh, instead of the Nouveau Barrage. So we kept it 
And we even write, wrote a E after them. So it became them, like la madame or la, uh, la femme. So it's kind of a really uh, a strange oddity that happened. And I, every time I go to uh, the La Chute's town and we, we talk about toponymy, I told them, you know, we have to correct that. They write it in a simple, simple cultural heritage. You no know, dam, D A M, and then neuve, dam neuve or the new dam. So <laughs> it's quite fun. Okay, the mandate of the commission is created under uh, the Charte de la Langue Française, and uh, the commission must, uh, you have all the standard, doing the standard carry out inventory, establish uh, formalized places, this and the, the official, okay, and give its opinion to the government on any question that latter submit to it in terms of toponymy. So if we as a collectivity, we decide that Dam Neuf should be written D A M N. E U V E, uh, we present it to the commission, and because we have an historical background behind behind this, and as well, quite quite an explanation or, or of the uh, derivation of the writing of the term, uh, it will probably be accepted in its English form. You see, so uh, we wouldn't lose the. Uh, uh, that, uh, that that inherited uh, and we could explain every time you know oh, how come the name is uh, the street is named damn nerve well it's because of that you know uh, we we were a uh, half and half a french and english uh, community and uh, people were mixing everything so it's all right okay uh the change to toponymy in quebec okay yeah. 1977, like I was saying, and then in 1979, the creation of the guide to toponymy. Okay, so the gen generic terms of toponymy must be in French, comply with contemporary French standards, and that was the time in, in 77 79. Okay, and specific elements of toponymy from everyday language, such as common names, must be in French language unless current or and exclusive use as enshrined in another language, like we were talking about Bethany or uh, Dam Neuf, you see? Uh, so there are always possibility to keep the cultural heritage alive with the toponymy, okay? Which is which is important, you know, because we can't we can't as a as a society, no matter what our our uh, political opinion, we can't decide that uh, yesterday was good, but today's not good anymore. See, uh, we we inherited lots of things from our for, for uh, from our ancestors and there were people here before uh french and english people they were they were natives see and we can't just you know uh run through that and say it doesn't exist anymore and from today on uh, we talk about this no we have to you know it, it it's a matter of uh, historical importance so the portrait of toponymy in quebec okay uh <laughs> In 1916, there was only 1,000 names, places. And you see, 69, we were up to 33,000. And then after that, it kind of exploded. See, 78, well, like uh, close to 10 years later on, double. And then in 2001, wow, it tripled. And then in 2013, we were at uh, 235,000 uh, toponyms in Quebec. This is, uh, you know, the main thing is from 78, uh, we started to uh, use the, 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 the nomenclature of the major roads, like, uh, you know, uh, the 50, the 40, uh, the 20, uh, it, they became part of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, topon the top toponyms in Quebec. And uh, those uh, main roads like uh, highways, um, uh, at the end, it, 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 uh, they would be, uh, they had been baptized, see, like uh, 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 the 40, uh, it's the Maurice Duplessis uh, Highway, see, and uh, uh, other bridges uh, and, and, and so forth. So this is why it has a, such an augmentation of toponyms in Quebec from 78 to 2001, okay? And uh, those toponyms are on four toponymic layers. You will see the French one, the English one, the indigenous one, and the others, because there are others toponyms, okay? So the portrait in Quebec in 2001 was that. 80% was French, uh, close to 6% uh, indigenous, 
11 percent uh, uh english and then three percent uh were others okay uh, as for english toponyms uh most of the uh, the, the names that we kept you see, you see like uh, uh the, uh, the township of uh, wentworth it's that's included uh, that, that included in the uh, english uh, toponyms okay um the evolution of toponymic layers between 69 and 2001 uh, we see that uh, there is an augmentation of really significant, uh, significant, significant, uh, significant yeah, uh, between, uh, what, sorry, uh, 78 and 2001 of the indigenous uh, toponyms, okay? As for the English ones, you know, there's a recognition of cultural heritage into the English toponyms. But well, mainly French. They, it's, it's normal from seventy eight that they had this this big augmentation. You see, but as as we see here, uh, it, it's not a, a, a recul. How, how would we say a recul? Uh, um, a, a way back for the English toponyms. It's always been in a certain augmentation. Okay, just as for the indigenous, and I figure that uh, with all the sensibilities that we have now with the uh, uh, indigenous history, that we're gonna have more toponyms, uh, indigenous one uh, coming, uh, and probably some of them would be uh, French toponyms that will go that, that are going to be translated into indigenous uh, toponym which which will be a great thing you know i i figure that if michel talks mountain uh, it uh, could be recognized as an official toponym it will be a great start see uh so the indigenous toponymy it's part of quebec cultural heritage it's right. Well, it has a writing difficulty due to the phonetics and translation, eh? because uh, uh, so many language uh, that we have from different places, the Inu, uh, and then we have the Algonquin, the Iroquois, and then the Abeneki, the Anishinaabe. So uh, it's it's uh, the Cree uh, up north. So there are lots, lots of language that we have to get f uh, familiar with. Okay. Uh, example of indigenous toponymy. You'd be surprised that we have Quebec. Yamaska, Yamashist, Kwatsko, Shibugamo, Kenogami, Rimuski, Matan, Chisasibi, Kenasatake, Shikutsimi, Maskush, Kujuak, Natashkwan, and so many more. Okay. And it's present, it's presence, it's it's there, it's always been there because these places that they has been named from, from the uh, uh, indigenous heritage. As French toponymy uh, mostly came from 16th century. Uh, cultural heritage of the first explorers, the, the, the discoverers and the fishermen, 17th century cultural heritage of the colon, colonizers, civil and religious authorities and lords, like Seigneur. Example, Champlain, Richelieu, uh, Saumont-Morency, Lachenay, Portneuf, Argenteuil. Okay. As for Argenteuil, uh, it came from the uh, the first country. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see later. I I, I don't want to uh, uh, burn the punches. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and you have Mont Royal, yeah, Saint Laurent, Ile d'Orléans, Long So. Mont Royal is quite a, a curious because you know Montreal, it's the same thing. Montreal, it's in uh, uh, Spanish. It's 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 it Mont Real. Real means royal. Royal means royal, okay? So, um, Montréal, it, it origins from the Spanish word uh, more royal. It's as simple as that. Uh, 18th century, cultural heritage from England, Scotland, and Ireland. And 19th century, we have cultural heritage of the name of political and military figures, mostly. So, for the 18th century, we have Windsor, all. Avoca, the nanny, okay? And as for uh, political figures and military figures, we have Wentworth, Harrington, Grenville, Chatham, okay? And we can say uh, uh, from a, a heritage here, we could we could uh, add uh, Arundel and uh, most of the places uh, name uh, up north in the Laurentian. Um, we have toponymy uh, of uh, a spontaneous and popular creation, often, it's descriptive as uh, La Claire, La Caron, La Caron, La Calalute, uh, Green Lake. See, okay. So 
Why did, did they name it Green Lake? Probably because the water was green or it seems to be green, but there's, there was probably lots of vegetation around the lake or, uh, you know, uh, Algua coming, uh, coming uh, from the, uh, at the time that the surveyor came there, they saw uh, lots of uh, green around. So they decided to call it Green Lake, okay? The present uh, presence of a uh, geographic uh, content, like uh, uh, like they say, is ill. So it's like a 16, 16 island, a pine hill, probably lots of pine on that hill. Lost River. Oh, wow. Do you know Lost River? Yeah, you probably sure heard of uh, Lost River. Eh? It's that river that starts from uh, Fraser Lake. Ah, it's in uh, uh, Brownsburg, Chatham. And then uh, the river runs from Fraser Lake and then it disappears under the rocks. And this is why they call it the Lost River. And then it reappears a little uh, further on later, uh, quite something like uh, 400 meters later, uh, later on its course. And it became another lake, and then a lake, and then it became that river, that river that we we call the West River. And this is the name of Lost River came from that uh, thing, or it is a curiosity like um, Gore, uh, Gore, the township of Gore. Uh, it, it's not an uh, horror movie. Not at all. Gore means unconceded land. It's it, it's a, it is as simple as that. So how do how do we accept that Gore, the township of Gore, is named on the town? Is probably its meaning township of unconceded land. So that, that was the thing at that uh, at that time. Okay. Uh, religious toponymy. Oh, the use of. Uh, Agionism, uh, agionyms. Wow, this is uh, really hard to uh, to say. Agionyms. Uh, what what is agionyms? It's the use of saint. Okay, Saint Jerusalem, Saint Philip, Saint Andrews. Okay, Saint Adolf Dower. So the, the 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 use of saint is the agionyms. Okay, and it it sometimes it's accompanied by a determinative like former seigneury. We have here Saint André d'Argenteuil, okay, uh, which determined the place uh, to make it diff uh, to uh, difference it from uh, Saint André Avelin or or Saint Andrew's West or uh, Saint Andrew's Church. So it's Saint André uh, d'Argenteuil, okay. So agionyms, it's Saint and toponyms in Quebec. They have lots and lots and lots of saints. As for St. Andrews, at first, it was an English toponym, okay? St. Andrews was named by Patrick Marie, the uh, Argenteuil Seigneur from uh, uh, 1793 to uh, 1803. And he decided to, to name that place just by the, 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 the North River after uh, before the first uh, rapids there. And uh, when he was creating his uh, little village around the 1795, 1796, he decided to name the place St. Andrews. So, because it was his patron. And he was... Uh, Scots or Irish? No, it's Scots. Saint Andrews, Scotch patron. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I hope I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so, uh, for now, do we have any questions or remarks? If anyone has questions, you can just come off mute and ask them. Yeah. Don't be shy. So if you do not have any questions, that means that everything is so uh, clear and limpid. And uh, <laughs> at the end, we'll have an exam and everyone will pass with 100%. Is that right? <laughs> I got great. a comment that says, yes, Scottish St. Andrews. Okay, and I great, think somebody great, unmuted great. themselves to ask something. I think we have a few questions. Yeah, I have a difference between uh, St. Uh, spelled out and ST. Oh, ST, ST is probably uh, ST and a point will be um, uh, in English, okay? And S-A-I-N-T will be in French, okay? Oh. Yeah. Um, I have a question about uh, about the names of townships. Yeah. Uh, is there a record of the names of townships? I have never found one. Oh, for the explanation of uh, the explanation why of the... Oh, yeah. This, yeah, well, this this is really a great question, uh, Mr. Graham, and so pleased to see you today. Uh, nice to um, see. You. Well, uh, in my research, you know, mostly for uh, Argenteuil, uh, sometimes we came with 
many explanations and there are not really an official one you see uh what you know so sometimes we have to do a, an editor's uh decision eh, as as historians and what i decided uh, to do with, with all these uh explanation that we have because there is not re not an official one well where we can find okay we named the township of wentworth uh, because of that uh, general or lieutenant governor or whichsoever or arrington or whichsoever so uh if what i found is that when they were named from um 1800 to uh, the 18, I would say, uh, 20s, it was probably a military or a political uh, uh, person, personage, okay, uh, who, who was active in the wars of the, the, the 18th century, and it's an honor for them to be named. Uh, so this, this is the way I look at it. But, you know, I know that in the Laurentian, we have so many townships, uh, uh, that we do not know uh, why. I found that for Gore, the simplest explanation was un unconceded land because you know they were named uh, they, they named it uh, Chatham Gore before, and after that it became the Gore and the Gore, the township of Gore. So there was nobody, uh, no generals, no politician in Britain that was named Gore, and Gore is probably uh, at the township of unconceded land. So. This, this is my explanation as an historian. This is what I offer as an explanation. But no, there is no place we could find uh, an official, uh, unless you or me as historian, we uh, suggest to the government that this, this could be the official uh, explanation, you see? Yeah, for, for Gore, there is an explanation that comes from uh, uh, a, a request for it to be recognized and it was described as these illegal Irish residents living on the gore of land. Yeah. And so maybe that could could work. Yeah, um, yeah, too. And, and and you know that they arrived really early in the, uh, in the 19th century. Eh? Some of them, uh, they probably were squatters from uh, starting from uh, 1816, around 1816. So uh, and they were squatters for many, many years. Some of them squatted the land for 40 years. <laughs> two generations it's quite incredible but is that was there some cause that made i mean there must have been a list kept at some point of when they were named and for and for what reason and it, could it have been lost in 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 some way like could it have been lost in the in the in the, in the library when the library was burnt in uh, in uh, 1849 yeah in montreal is that right yeah, yeah, with the yeah, with lots of paper from uh, the, the 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 military canals and uh, on the Ottawa River, I I I would say, but that could be a good explanation too. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Anyone I have else? one question in the yeah. chat. Good. Why did the name of Rosemire, a Scottish lake, become wrongly translated as Mother of Rose in French? Wow. <laughs> Excellent. That, well, you, you know, probably as, as the same as the destroyed the name uh, Dame Neuve. Yeah, you see, uh, they were looking for explanation, see, and it became, it became a, with time a curiosity. And uh, I do not know who was working uh, as, uh, you know, a uh, municipal uh, 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 officer in a uh, uh, municipal office in La Chute who decided that we need to write a, uh, a, a E after dam when everybody knew that dam is barrage and dam is written D-A-M, see? So probably with Rosemary, it's the same thing, the, the same curiosity that happened, eh? So. I have a question for you, totally on the subject, but out of left field. With so much going on about the religion and each person and the crucifix and the, the hijab and all that, has there ever been a discussion about removing the S-T or S-A-I-N-T in front of all these towns and whatever named after saints? 
Wow, this is, is, is quite an interesting question and probably everyone would have an opinion on that. Eh? Um, I would say that, you know, for probably for the Quebec government, uh, the fact that the saint or the, the ST or the S-A-I-N-T is, um, uh, uh, is, is a part of our cultural heritage, it will be difficult for them to remove all, all of this agionism, you see? Uh, and, and especially that, you know, for generation and generation, we've been, you know, hearing those things. So I would, I would say it will be difficult. I hope not, them. because it'll make everything yeah. confusing. Yeah, I have confused. another question, yeah. too, yeah. is I've been living here since 1959. And what you call De Montagne was two mountains. I understand yeah. the translation. But before it was called saint eustache sur le lac what would cause it to change? What would cause the, the a vote to change the name? From saint eustache sur le lac to uh, De Montagne. Oh, it's probably yeah. because uh, saint eustache became a, a town, a municipality or, or something and decided, and they said, we have to, uh, and the people from saint eustache sur le lac, they wanted to create their own municipality but probably they, they agreed on the term that it will become De Montagne instead of say, keep saint eustache this, All this always goes to a vote when it's, a town name yeah. is changed. Yeah. It's, it's the population or it's the government changes it? S sometimes it will be the population. Sometimes it will be the municipality that will propose it to the, 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 the commission, uh, the, 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 the toponymic commission, okay? Okay. Um, He's probably you heard about the nanny, okay? Uh, the nanny close to La Chute. And uh, you know that uh, two times in their history, they wanted to create a municipality. And they wanted, they, they wanted that the, the, the town of uh, Dunani or the municipality of Dunani, uh, which includes parts of La Chute, parts of Gore, parts of uh, uh, Brownsburg Chatham and part of, uh, part of uh, Township uh, uh, of Wentworth, that that little community of uh, well, Irish Protestant descendant uh, become a, a small municipality and they went to vote okay they they, they had two referendums one in i i, I remember I, I think i remember 1917 and the other one in 19 in the 1950s and both they lost the referendum by shortage of uh, 40 percent to 60 and then uh, 48 to uh, 52 so and dunani never became a municipality but for the people living there they always named the place Dunani, you see, uh, but it was never an official one. So, so okay. it, it, you see, th th there is power to the people, but then after that, it, was, it has to be the majority who wants it. So okay. I figured it's the same thing with the toponym. But I remember that when we changed name in St. Andrews after uh, 1977 uh, and 79, and that our street became King's Row, lots of people were didn't agree. Even French people didn't agree for the change, you see. And it was hard for us to write de la Seigneurie. And for, so for many, many years, we were still writing 39 King's Row instead of de la Seigneurie. And uh, after that, you know, the postman said, OK, well, you have to stop that because we, we won't deliver the mail anymore. <laughs> Another question? I have one in the chat. What is brown about Brownsburg? Oh, it, uh, well, you see, nice question. And it create the, the, the lien to uh, go further in my presentation because now we go to Argenteuil's toponymy, okay? <laughs> and we're going to explain uh, all the names in uh, Argenteuil. Okay, I, uh, oh, Elizabeth, you, see, you have a question yeah. there? Yeah. Yes, I have uh, one more question. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out Mille Il, yeah. the, the village, and it's, it's spelled like M-I-L-L-E, like thousand in French. Yeah. But the word ill is spelled with an S instead of an accent circumflex with the S removed. And I yeah. don't yeah. understand why. Well, you see, it's quite uh, interesting because, you know, it's probably inherited from the, the time of the Seigneurie des Mille Illes. Eh? At that time, uh, they, they wrote Seigneurie des Mille Illes with uh, the old French name. Il was written at that time, E-S-E-S-E. -S -E -S -E 
uh, LES, okay, instead of the accent circumflex that we use in the modern French, okay. So it's probably an inheritance from the old French. Uh, and Melil was part of the augmentation des Melil. That, that means the gore of the Seigneurie des Melil, you know, because they have senior, uh, Seigneurie <laughs> on the Rivière des Melil and on Lake of Two Mountain and then on the Ottawa River, see? And uh, the unconceded part up north, when everything was settled in the Seigneurie, they opened new land. And these new lands were named Augmentation, Augmentation des Melil or uh, Augmentation uh, uh, de, de la Seigneurie de Terrebonne, uh, La Corne uh, and everything. So, okay. Can I? Uh, I have to. Oh, oh, yeah, you go ahead, Mr. Graham. Yeah, uh, just a little background because I did some research into this one and it's really quite fascinating. The, the um, Northern Irish people arriving in St. Andrews and looking to colonize, to, to farm, were attracted to that um, extension of Milil because it was written, of course, with an S, but they always pronounced it Milile. Milile. And they still pronounce it Milile. And uh, uh, in researching the reason, I found that some of the families actually came from a place in Northern Ireland with a view of an island that was called Mill Isle. Mm. And they felt that it was, they, they probably felt that it was a, in a way a certain homecoming. There were other options for, for names that they could have used around there that were very Irish, but they chose that one. And it's, you know, they chose that one to, to, to stay, to, to become the, the, the little hamlet. So yeah. It's just an offering as an explanation. Well, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great, really interesting to, uh, to see that point. And especially for them, you know, to go up north, you always wonder why they would go so further up north to establish, you know, and, and try to farm these land that was only, you know, probably they would uh, uh, re, um, crops only rocks, eh? because there was so, 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 so much rocks. And it was hard for them. It was lots of hardship that they, 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 uh, they, they went up there. So, um, and it's probably really a reminder for, uh, for them of the old country, of the old places that they came from. Eh? And it looks like home and uh, it was a good way to possess the land too. And as for Melil, uh, the township of Melil, you know, it was a part of land that was in a seigneurial, um, uh, well, way of uh, uh, possessing the land. So that, that means that most of the land was owned by a seigneur. But by the time they created the township of uh, Melil on the Côte, uh, Côte Saint-Angélique and uh, the, the other Côte, um, uh, the, the seigneurial system was abolished. So these places became uh, private pro property instead of under, under seigneurial rules, you see. Mm -hmm. As for Argenteuil, uh, it was a seigneurie. So everybody coming to Argenteuil they, they would have been mostly renters of the land, not, uh, not owners of the land, unless they would establish in Le Chute. In Le Chute, because of the, 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 the way that uh, uh, Seigneur Patrick Murray sold uh, that part of land from the uh, Autoroute 50 to Lake, Lake Sir John, uh, from uh, Mirabel to uh, Amford Street, that part was named uh, Lane's Purchase, and it was sold to Jedediah Lane Jr. in uh, 1796. And that part of territory was a free, free land. So you could <laughs> buy the land and you were not uh, obligated to pay sans and uh, rent on the land. So you were not a locataire or a uh, renter, you were an own owner. And it was important for Patrick Marie to do that type of agreement with Lane because, you know, just on the Western side, there was Chatham, uh, Chatham Township. And then after that, the Grenville Township. There, they were freeholders land. Okay, you had 200 acres of land that you would buy for a couple of dollars and the, the fees of the surveyor, but you were not under seigneurial rules. You see, so that was quite a difference, and they were they were in competition. If you wanted to develop your seniority, you had to offer something. See, so as for Lane's Corner, that was the that, that, that was the, the way they did it. We are right there. 
this is Lane's corner. Uh, no, uh, well, it's Shoot's Purchase. You see, it's Shoot uh, Purchase. So this Lane Purchase, uh, we have the 50 here, and we have up here, Lake Sir John. And we have here, that's, um, I would say, a Pearl of Shoot. And this is the Amford Street going up to Brownsburg there, okay? So this here, 7,000 acres of land that was sold to Jedediah, Jedediah Lane Jr. with the Gros Chute here on the North River. So that was in the seigneurial parts and it was a free older. But the seigneur kept himself a certain rights on the mills here because you know the seigneur was obligated to build uh, mills, okay? Uh, to uh, for uh, for the, uh, the 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 pioneer family would uh, you know uh, crop lands they would have to go to the sawmill or uh, the grist mill or the uh, uh, the woolen mill okay so Lane's purchase that was this and he had a little place here called Lane Lane's Corner see this is here is the Bethany Road that comes up to Lachute okay. We have the post office here on the side here. Uh, we have Main Street here. Uh, and then we have uh, the bridge here, which is called Fish Bridge. And then you go to Ayers Woolen Mill here and Cascade, uh, Cascade Mill was G.C. Wilson Mills at the time, Paper Mill, okay? The West River here and all, all here, uh, it was called La Chute Mills. And right here was called Lane's, Lane's Corner. And it was right in front of the bridge that goes up to the nanny and just by the old English uh, Protestant cemetery at the beginning of the village, okay? Those places right here, you know, in the village, there was not many, many houses. Most of the houses uh, at the first of the uh, beginning of the 19th century were built around here and around here. And this, is, this was one of the road going to St. Andrews in, that, that, that map was made in 1824. And there was the road here from Coteau des Arts going up. And then we have here, that road that was going up, 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 up to the north, okay? The first bridge was White Bridge. It was right around here. So Lane's Purchase and Le Chute Mills became Le Chute in 1876 when the train station well the 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 the, the railway came to the shoot okay uh as for the shoot you know there was two shoot in the shoot you say how, how come they, they didn't name the place uh, the shoots well because you know the gross shoot was in the seigneury d'argenteuil and the grand shoot was in the township of chatham okay the grand shoot had uh quite uh, almost a kilometer long here and was a series of rapid and it had close to 50 feet of uh, of rapids going down under the gros chute which now is hidden underneath the um the uh sorry underneath uh, the um uh the dam of uh, uh either cascade and airs uh, airs electric company today uh, both of them dam neuve and the first uh, the first dam uh, the gros chute was close to 30 feet high you know this is why they they, they called it the, the gros chute and then after that like i said it became above the big chute above the chute en haut de la gros chute en haut de la chute and then la chute the chute settlement and this is how le chute got its name so the toponymic coverage of a territory is presented as a, an image of the human environment to which the vestiges of the past are attached. So we have, yeah, it's, 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 it's full of history. As for Ottawa River, this is interesting. They have indigenous toponymy like Kitschisip or Kachisipi, huh? which mean comes from the <laughs> Algumakin. Or the Odontuaran, uh, well, uh, this one I have really difficulties to pronounce it, Utawak or Adawe, that comes from Algonquin. So probably Ottawa comes from Adawe, okay? Algonquin was named by Champlain. Samuel de Champlain named these people the Algonquin. And in his uh, certain of uh, a couple of his map, he wrote Utawak, Rivière des Utawak. Um, so 
the Ottawa River is named after a First Nation that never lived on its shores. <laughs> the Ottawa lived on Ma Manitoulin Island in Lake Huron, okay? But they were traveling. They were the travel people. They were doing commerce all over the Ottawa River. So it's probably how it became Ottawa. But, you know, in French, we say Outaouais. Uh, Outaouais, probably closer to uh, Outaouac and Adawe. And it's, it's, it's always a, a question of hearing. How do the French heard the first name pronounced? And they kept it in their, uh, um, uh, in, well, uh, in their mind. And by, you know, doing the, sometimes the Arab telephone, you see, it kind of dis adds a certain distortion in the pronunciation. So, so it comes from the Algonquin and Kississippi means the grand, grand River, so the Long River, which is, well, the, the Ottawa River is really long. It's close to, well, it's at uh, 1,200 kilometers and more. And Attaway mean those who trade. Okay. Uh, we have lots of toponym, uh, indigenous toponym on the Ottawa River. We have Kenochuan, West Carini, Onancharon, on Algonquin, Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe being humans, human being, and the Kishisi Pirini. Okay, and we have uh, in French we have Kinchien that becomes the long saw. Uh, West Carini, it's the deer people, the the le peuple du chevreuil. The Onancharonon, they were the southern Iroquois living on the uh, the 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 on the the. Um, the southern part of the Ottawa River. Algonquin means our parents are allies. Anishinaabe means human being. And Kishisi Pirini means the people from the Grand River. Uh, the chronology from the 16th, 17th century. Jacques Cartier named it the Grande Rivière and Champlain la Rivière qui vient du Nord. And then the Rivière des Algumaquins or Algomaquins. In the 17th century, les Jésuites, the they named it Rivière des Prairies or Rivière des Hurons because the, the uh, Hurons were traveling by that river. And then after that, Pierre Esprit Radisson named, named it La Grande Rivière, so the Grand River. And all the, 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 the surveyors, they named it the Rivière des Outaouais or Rivière des Outaouais. So probably the first time we hear Outaouais, it's in 1680 from Bernou's uh, map. Uh, in the 18th centuries, uh, it became 70, 1725, Rivière des Outaouais, and then Rivière des Outaouais, <laughs> and then a Grand River. So not, uh, 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 it's, these uh, toponym were, came from uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, sales uh, act on, uh, from a notary uh, Peter Lucan, okay? And 19th century, we have Rivière des Ottawa. So you see, it evolves during the time. For becoming coming a, a, an official toponym, it has, it has certain evolution. The North River, first time we hear about it, uh, it's uh, 1680, 1682, uh, from the Pledge of Concession of the Seigneurie d'Argenteuil to Charles d'Ailebou de Musso. And it was given by Frontenac. Okay, and it's probably this, the first time that we hear about Seigneurie, uh, about Argenteuil, because, you know, Dailebout de Musso, uh, that family had a certain property in Argenteuil. Okay, and in 1795, we have it in the uh, enumeration of the Seigneurie d'Argenteuil that was made by uh, Marie-Louise Denis, at the time she was the Seigneur d'Argenteuil. Uh, as for Argenteuil, like I said, from 1780, and after that, uh, 1695, Pierre d'Ailebou, the son of Charles d'Ailebou de Musso, his name, uh, he became Charles d'Ailebou d'Argenteuil. So he's the second seigneur of Argenteuil. Uh, here we have a map uh, of 1816 of the St. Andrews village. You see, you have the North River here, the first bridge crossing the river, and you have here, uh, the mills, the grist mill, and that little dam here, and you have the sawmill here, and probably the uh, paper mill was built around here, and they had a little canal that was going from here to up up the dam. But uh, that island is named today the Mode Habit Island. Oh, sorry, 
Modabit Highland, and on the other side between the two, uh, the, the island and the, uh, the north shore of the North River, the eastern shore, I would say, there was a dam there too. And they, they built a little canal to bring water to the, the paper mill. This mill here, that was the older mill. Now we have the mill that uh, is standing, still standing today in St. Andrews. It was, it, was right, it was right here and it was the grist mill built by uh, Sir John Johnson in 1829. That old grist mill was probably built around 1794 by uh, Thomas Mears and a couple of Americans who came to St. Andrews. So I would say uh, we have King Street here that became King, King's Row and then the St. Andrews Street here who became eight, uh, the, the, the 344 or now we would say the Route du Lonceau. Huh? Is that right? So you see from a map like this that was uh, you know, created in, the, in the 1816, uh, uh, we, we, we could use it uh, to... Uh, uh, you know, uh, make a, a, a big path in the past and say, as a cultural heritage, that place was named after where C and that, and we could change the name of the street using that kind of map. Uh, lanes purchase, we went to that, okay. Jaded Lane, Lanes Corner, Lashet Mills. Uh, a certain part was called St. Catherine's, close to Lashet Mills, Baronsville, Baronsville, in, well, the honor of Thomas Barron, and then Warrenstown, okay? Uh, and then in La Chute, we have a Bug the Vic Chute, a bug, uh, en haut de la Grosse Chute, Chute Settlement, Chute Purchase, La Chute, Upper La Chute, East Settlement, La Chute Road, and then in 1952, Ayersville. Ayersville, in memory of um, Thomas Henry Ayers, the builder of the woolen mill in La Chute, okay? Oh, beautiful map here, too. You see, you have the Bethany Road here that goes to St. Eustache. Uh, Main Street here, Argenteuil. Foundry Street would change name now. It's La Fleur, Rue La Fleur. And then we had here, you know, the churches, the cemetery, and a couple of uh, offices. They were stationed in Lane's Corner. And you have La Chute Mills here. And you see the main street here was really developed with the uh, arriving of the train, uh, the railway. Uh, Le Chute in 1885 had close to 15,000 people, uh, 1,500 people. Uh, 10 years earlier, they were 650. So it kind of tripled the population in 10 years because of the installation of the railway. And it became an, an, a little industrial town at that time. Okay. Our lakes. Okay. Sir John Lake comes from Sir John Johnson. Okay. At the beginning, it was named Bouchette Lakes because of the surveyor, Joseph Bouchette. Okay. Emily Lake. It's in La Chute. Let's go on the, uh, the uh, other map. Right here. You see that that little pound here by the, 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 the North River is called Emily Lake. And Emily was probably the daughter, the daughter of uh, John Mikkel, John Mikkel, who was the owner of that part of land before the McEwitts. Uh, we have Clear Lake, La Claire. The water is so clear that they, they name it Clear Lake. Okay, Dawson Lake, because of the pioneer family Dawson, who came and established around Dawson Lake. Barron Lake, in memory of Thomas Barron, the first one the one who was a colonel in the Argenteuil uh, military and uh, um, uh, 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 Milice d'Argenteuil, sorry. Uh, and he was a Scots, came to Le Chute in 1808. MacDonald Lake, probably in uh, remembrance of uh, MacDonald pioneer family, McGillivray, same thing, and Commandant. Commandant, it's not because he was a commander in the, in the military. No, it's the name of the, 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 the people who live around the lake. They were uh, natives and their family name were commander. Okay. Uh, our rivers, Ottawa, North, Riso William, 
Uh, you have the Rouge or the St. Andre River, the West River, the Middle Branch, the Eastern Branch, uh, uh, Dewar, Le Ruisseau, Dewar, Kingsley River, the Calumet River, the Rouge River, Masquinonge River. The Rouge River is named because of uh, uh, the, uh, the iron that we find in the water. Calumet River, uh, it's because of Calumet. At, at that little place there in Calumet, uh, probably lots of uh, natives uh, used to come and gather around this place. Uh, so this is why they call it the Calumet, okay? As for Kingsley, it's uh, mainly, uh, uh, that's in, uh, close to Grenville and uh, it was a mill river there, Kingsley. Okay, a front road and a by road. <laughs> okay, front road. Uh, they had no name. They were called the front road. Okay, the front road leading from St. Andrews to uh, Le Chute or the front road leading from Le Chute to St. Jerome or uh, to, to St. Eustache or whichever. And the by road, they were the secondary roads. Okay, those that we use on the northern part of the North River to go up north, but probably a secondary road. Uh, if we look at on the western part, you heard about the Scotch Road that leads from Grenville up to over Denani, close to Denani. That was the uh, the path that the, um, the, uh, the, the 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 Scotch pioneer used to go up north to the 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 the, uh, the range of the township uh, uh, that was up north in uh, the township of Grenville, or to go to Harrington. Uh, they were not traveling by the Rouge River, you know, because it was too hilly, too, too, it's not a navigable river, so, uh, and to do the portage around the Rouge River, it was quite impossible, you, we just look at, you go by the, the North River, okay, it's, it's an easy way to travel over uh, Chutbel, but, but then, you see, uh, it was hard, so they create that little path, uh, that was named the Scotch Road, the Chemin des Écossais, and it was a colonization path that they used to go up to Arundel. Okay, and it was at that time, you know, it was going from uh, Grenville up to uh, Harrington Road, and then after that, uh, uh, the, going up north just by uh, the Mill Pond and, and, and over Lake McDonald and on north, uh, up north of Lake McDonald, between Lake McDonald and Lake Beaven, it was crossing from the uh, eastern, eastern end to the western end, close to the Rouge River Valley, and then after that to Arundel. That was the main road at that time. Uh, used by the, the, the pioneer families who established uh, Arundel. Uh, well, later on, they develop other roads, but they're going around, uh, around the Lacron and uh, whichever lake uh, up there. Um, the difference between a main road and a, uh, and a secondary road, you see, a main road, they had to, uh, uh, they, they, they would cross through lands and they would, always have to uh, get agreement from the the uh, well the owner of these land to pass road because you know if you had a gully to build it was uh, uh, the owner who had to build the, uh, the, the the bridge down the gully so it was quite uh, implied lots of uh, agreements between people anyhow okay streets uh, Baron from Thomas Baron Bethany we know Grace uh, most of the name in Le Chute, you know, they come from uh, the, the Baron's family. Some of them were wives, uh, other were children, okay? As for bridges, uh, we went through that, uh, okay? Uh, Le Chute streets, I, I know that uh, I, I talk a lot and I don't want to take too much time. It's uh, the, already uh, two o'clock and 10, so, and I, 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 I want to, uh, uh, have an exchange with you and uh, leave time for the questions. Okay, uh, Lashut Street from ba uh, Baron's family. We have Harriet, the first wife of Tom and Baron, Grace, uh, second wife of Thomas Baron, then the children, Thomas, Henry, Mary, Elizabeth, Sydney, and Robert. Uh, uh, sometimes it changes, you know, uh, Margaret becomes Bedar, Lanes become Grace, Makel become Robert, Gilbert become Carrière, Foundry become Lafleur, you become Fraser. Okay, so sometimes it changed names. I, I, I took a Le Chute example because we have, you know, lots of toponyms and that, uh, and lots of example. Uh, um, 
when there is a choice of uh, for a toponym, you know, like I said, uh, sometimes uh, Le Chute, uh, municipality, they ask me for a, a couple of names, you see? So I, I came up with Francis, which is Francis Charles Ireland. He was a mill entrepreneur and he was one of uh, the first writer in the paper at that time in the Watchman and Daily Ad Advocate who wrote sketches of Le Chute. I, I figured that this this guy here, uh, he deserve uh, um, a street uh, in his name. Um, as for Abigail, like I told you, you know, she was Ezekiah Clark's first wife, uh, wives, and uh, the first woman to come to Lachute, and probably the first woman to give birth in Lachute. Uh, and I think it's important to celebrate uh, that kind of memory. Uh, as for Benjamin, uh, it's a Benjamin Hammond who was a landowner on, in the Bethany settlement. Okay. Let's go to uh, the Brownsburg and Chatham. Brownsburg, okay, it comes from jo George Brown. George Brown was a, a, a millwright who, who came up north of uh, Le Chute and established just by the West River in that place called jo uh, Brownsburg. And the name of Brownsburg comes from uh, his name, uh, George Brown. Uh, Saint Philip at first was named Muddy Branch and then Mignot because of the uh, the priest there whose name was Arthur Mignot. So we had post office traces uh, that says that uh, this place was named Mignot and then after that Muddy Branch and in 1873 Saint Philip the Chatham. Okay, Chatham's uh, township uh, comes in memory of Sir William Pitt. He was a British politician and the first Earl of Chatham. So uh, th this is uh, 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 why, Mr. Graham, I'm, uh, I, uh, this is my theory of all the uh, the name of the township in Argenteuil, okay? Um, as for Brunsburg Chatham, Northern Hamlet, we have Dalesville from Daniel Dale. We have Edina. It's a place in Ireland, okay? Pine Hill is because of the Pine Hill. Mount Maple, probably because of the nature. Roussillon, it's probably remembering uh, places in uh, closer in France and then Brownsburg from George Brown. We have Mabel, Stainerville from Thomas Stainer, St. Philip, Chadborough, Stonefields. You, you can, you can uh, probably imagine why it's a Stonefields, eh? Uh, Cushing from Lemuel Cushing and then Greece's Point. Uh, it's not because it's the Point du Grec. It's because of Mr. Charles Claude, Charles Claude Greece, who was the Greece who was the owner of that uh, part uh, of the territory. As Harrington comes from Charles Stanhope, the third Earl of Harrington, the toponym uh, honors the office and military action of Colonel Stanhope, who participated, among others, in, in the Battle of Saratoga during the wars of the American Revolution. Okay. Um, and some of these toponyms of the township, they were chosen during the lifetime of these people, okay? As for Hamlet in Harrington, you have Rivington, Mill Pound, Lost River, Rouge River, Lakeview, the Glen of Harrington, which is beautiful place. Uh, as for Grenville, name in the memory of Lord George Grenville, the British politician, okay? And the British government has specified in the proclamation of the township of Granville, 1808, that lot number eight, that the place where the village is uh, on the first rent belonged to the reserve of the British crown and was to be used for the establishment of the said military village. So at first it was a military village, you know, because it was a strategic position at the end of the long soul, you know, people had to get off the river at that place <laughs> to travel to the, the uh, on the land and uh, you know just to uh, uh, go by the uh, the uh, uh, incredible shoot that was the head of the long soul. Um, Granville sur la Rouge, well, which it's the augmentation. I did just had a little part, but then it in uh, in brigade most of the 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 the, 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 the land on the of the Granville Township. Some of the Hamlet, Point Calumet, Point O'Shane, Avoca, well, who comes from Ireland, Scotch Road, uh, Rockcliffe, and Kilmar and Maryland. Kilmar and Mar Maryland, uh, these are all, uh, it comes from the, um, the name of the wife of the owner of uh, the, 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 uh, the mine that was established at Kilmar. Uh, and it means Margaret Kilgour. Okay, so we have the Mar for Margaret and the kill for Kilgo. Kilgo was the name of the owner of the mine, okay? And Maryland, it's Margaret Land. It's as simple as that, okay? Gore, 
uh, we went through that. We have Lake, Lakefield, Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, that was a really interesting uh, Irish Protestant community living there from, well, I would say uh, the, the middle of the 19th century up until uh, 19, uh, 19, 1920s. Uh, most of the, well, two or three generation living there. And after that, people, you know, just kind of... Uh, uh, left the land and they went to establish in Moronites or some of them go went up to Arundel and all that little part here today is the forest that uh, has retaken its rights on these uh, these valleys. Uh, we had a beautiful little church there at the time but it burned and now today in Shrewsbury there's only a cemetery uh, living there. And as for the nanny, uh, well, it was named after Sidney's Bellingham, uh, uh, who uh, rem it reminded him of a place of his childhood north of Dublin in Ireland. Okay. Millil, the township of Millil was part of the augmentation of Seigneurie de Millil. Okay. It was formalized in 1855 after the uh, abolition of the seigneurial regime. We have little hamlets like Cambria, Millil, and Tamaracuta. Okay. Uh, I, I do not know what, uh, what it means, Tamaracuta. So, sorry. Saint André d'Argenteuil came from Saint Andrew, Saint Andrews East, Saint André, Saint André Est. We have Geneva, a little place uh, between La Chute and uh, Saint André d'Argenteuil. It was named Geneva because of the Colonel uh, Adolphus, uh, Gustavus Adolphus Hooker, who uh, uh, he and his wife always wanted to go to Geneva in Switzerland. So he, and he decided, decided to name the little hamlet and the post office there, Geneva. Beechridge, Beechridge, which means Coteau des Alpes. Uh, Carillon, oh, Carillon, it's interesting. Some of them said it was a carrying place, okay? But the Ile de Carillon, uh, we found trace of Ile de Carillon uh, before 1725, you know, uh, and it seems like it was always named that, well, Carillon from Philippe Carillon de Fresne, probably, okay? Pieds de Lonceau, so there you go. As Wentworth, from John Wentworth, the governor of New Hampshire, and then Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia from 1792 to 1808, okay? Um, we have the Glen of Arrington, and then we have Louisa, Lake Louisa or Louisa, Probably named after a servant who worked at the cottage from John Joseph Caldwell Abbott, uh, who was a member of parliament and uh, third prime minister of Canada from June 1891 to November 1892. And, and, and this year, it's part of a, the legend, okay? I'm not sure that <laughs> it is the right explanation. Right, there we go. Questions. <laughs> Hope I did not do, do not uh, did not take too much time. I'm happy. No, thank you so much, Robert, for that presentation. So, if anybody has questions, I just want to clarify because I'm a scout leader, so Tamarakuta, <laughs> and I don't even know what it means, and it's the scout camp. So it says here that the, the name Tamarakuta was chosen due to the large number of tamarack trees located on the property and the word kuta, meaning body of water in Algonquin language. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> so if anybody has have questions, please come off mute and ask them. Um, I'm just going to stop the recording. Um,